Welcome everyone to the final presentation for the bachelor thesis on unified path following guidance for hybrid vehicles. Um, so I would like to start with some motivation. Uh, this shows a Pixworthy uh, private company's mission on mapping the motherboard, which involves uh, 20 or 15 different flights called the UAV launched from the top of the mountain using sophisticated path following and then it resulted in a 3D topological map. And for this, of course, the path following is important because you want to capture the uh, key points of interest. However, they also use 10 different UAVs, including mountaineers, which with the current um, better and more efficient hybrid VTOLs can be enhanced by having a single survey mission or even uh, better to launch from the ground, not from the top of the mountain. And so this uh, field where we have a path following, but also a very um, emerging field of hybrid vehicles, there's a need and uh, interest for creating a path following algorithm for the full um, survey mission use cases and so on. So, regarding the related work, um, as hybrid vehicles are a new field, um, there are decoupled methods. So, first, there is a fixed wing um, control method which basically is very optimized for a unicyclic function, which means that when a fixed wing has a um, wherever bearing is has, then it will fly at an almost constant speed. So it cannot vary its speed as fast as it can in multiple cases. And so it works very well for fixed wings. However, this currently hasn't been adapted to multiple cases. Now, the second case is the multi-rotor. And multi-rotors, as you know, is very agile and usually can go to any trajectory point. And for that, they can have an incredibly flexible velocity uh, range, and thus it uses often a slightly different uh, path following algorithm, where it just tries to follow a single point on the track, and then that works very well. And so let's uh, try to find the problem. What is the current conventional fixed wing path following guidance uh, limitations? So fixed wing, as I just described, has a constant nominal speed. However, for multi-rotors, they don't have a fixed nominal speed. And so what happens, so this is an example of me adapting the current uh, fixed wing path following directly onto the uh, case of multi-rotor. And I just set the nominal speed to zero, which wasn't, shouldn't be accounted for in the thesis. But what it does is it draws this um, undefined curve where it's actually um, not meant to be used in this way, but it does work, but it's not optimized for the multi-order So the goal of the project is basically having a unified guidance that can handle both vehicle constraints and thus support multi-order, hybrid vehicle, and fixed wing cases. Meanwhile, uh, utilizing the full maneuverability envelope. So the approach that I took uh, is a vector field method, which is basically the basis of the fixed wing guidance that um, I referenced. The reason is because it's a very simple approach where you have a path uh, going to the right and the screen, and then you can have a vector that defines where the vehicle should be moving over the ground. And it's a very generic uh, algorithm that is geometric, so you can extend this to different types of vehicles, which is ideal for our case. And also, um, this doesn't depend on each vehicle type, such as which is the case for optimal control or all the predictive controls, and so this is a simple use case, and that's why I adopted for the vector field. So in the vector field approach, um, we have a three stage for the path following uh, problem. We have a vehicle approaching the path, and then turning into the path, and then achieving the desired velocity on path. And now. What we want to achieve is basically formulating these two, curve, uh, two velocity curves, which is first, the orthogonal velocity curve should have a V approach that at the tracker boundary, where it should be approaching at perpendicular speed. And it should achieve, finally, the V path on the path. And thus, we have to come up with a, a curve that will manipulate the in-between states. So, um, these are the methods that I'm proposing and also the base method that we're referencing. The first method is the unicyclic click method, which was the fixed wing navigation uh, method. So for that, 
uh, we have a constant nominal speed, <coughs> and as it approaches a path, it has a look ahead angle, which basically is altering this red um, arrow bearing vector towards the path as it comes close to the path. And simply, it will map it with the nominal speed because the fixed wing has a nominal constant speed. However, uh, the current, uh, so what I'm approaching in this uh, thesis is the hybrid approach where we can have our orthogonally decoupled path and approach speed. So what this allows is we have, we can maintain the look ahead angle as is before. However, we can stretch this circle into an ellipse in any direction. So we can achieve any defined V path or V approach, and thus we can extend it to the multilevel use case. So we'll talk about evaluation. Um, so first, two most important things, approach speed and path speed. Does it actually approach at our speed that we want, and does it actually follow the path at the speed that we want? And on top of that, we can also uh, evaluate the monotonicity, which means does it break and accelerate, um, or does it constantly <coughs> break or accelerate, which is the desired behavior we want, because we don't want the vehicle to be expanding energy and then consuming it. That's uh, undesirable. And two further points on acceleration and course rates um, are also considered. However, these were not the main focus for the current thesis. So first, um, we'll try it out on a zero speed on path. So this basically shows um, the hybrid approach being ellipse uh, squashed into a vertical line as you have a path velocity of zero, which basically defines that multi-order will go straight to the path. And this is commonly how it's done. Like if you buy a multi order it will behave like this. And this makes a lot of sense, because multi order should go to the path and stop. And thus, it removes the residue effect that we show in the first uh, slide, where it had an undefined curve going to the path. And so you can notice that because it, has, um, it still maintains the orthogonal approach speed uh, exactly the same as the unicyclic one, the orthogonal velocity, which is the second one from the top, doesn't change. However, the pa parallel velocity changes the whole trajectory and thus satisfy the multi-order use case. And if we go for the high-speed approach, uh, we simply extend this to the higher path velocity. And thus, we can achieve a different curve where, as is in the fixed wing case, it wouldn't be visible because we cannot accelerate like multi-orders. But we can adapt so that we can use it on the multi order use case. And same uh, path velocity changes, but the orthogonal uh, approach speed curve stays constant. So, one important thing uh, is, of course, does this new approach still support the previous uh, fixed wing use case? Because we really want to be unified. And that is the case because our hybrid approach basically has more flexible ellipsoid. Um, formulation, but for the fixed wing use case, we just have to constrain the velocity approach and velocity path into the nominal speed, and thus it will form a circle which is identical to the original um, guidance. And thus we can benefit from the original um, guidance um, theories and everything. So this is an uh, example simulation showing how it would behave and what the difference would be. So we can imagine a red uh, as like a fixed wing vehicle that we typically would do path following on. And they will have a constant speed. And they will have a constant uh, radius arc. And yeah, they'll turn into the path as expected. However, uh, this is a case where we try to reduce the path speed, which basically uh, is only possible for most rotor. And then for that case, we can achieve a different curve. Um, and yeah, that's the desired um, behavior for the multi-orders. And furthermore, um, previously we discussed the monotonicity and then the acceleration limit. Um, so the monotonicity-wise, because we have an ellipsoid velocity curve, it means that uh, it will never um, have non-monotonic behavior. Because by definition, the ellipse will always have a decreasing or increasing um, distance to the origin. And secondly, the acceleration limit wise, because we already have um, orthogonal component identical to the original formulation, 
the acceleration in orthogonal frame doesn't change. And also the par pa parallel orthogonal um, acceleration can change. However, because of the norm of the total uh, vector, uh, the fixed wings limit, which is um, significantly lower than the multi-order's case, um, is still applying for the multi order orthogonal case, which basically means that we're, it, it is feasible for the multi order acceleration limit. Um, so I'd like to discuss what are the achievements, limitations, and future work is. Uh, first, the unified path following formulation that is applicable to multi order and fixed screen has been um, formulated. However, um, the dynamic constraints hasn't been considered, uh, which I can go further as uh, extra slides. Um, basically, the acceleration and jerk limits are um, not considered in this thesis. Therefore, that will, that uh, severely limits the implication. But, however, from this thesis, uh, current state of the thesis, we can implement and test on a real hybrid vehicle, which is the future plan, and then incorporating wind into Python's uh, thus. Um, uh, extending it to more excessive wind cases is uh, future work that can be done. So, thank you for um, yeah listening to the presentation. I'll be open for any questions. Thanks so much. So, um, first, quickly for the big swing, you assume that you have constant speed, but in principle, you can also vary the speed and not very fast. Mm -hmm. Why is this so restrictive? Um, so that's why I sort of um, put a bit of a uh, buffer zone there. It is by, in theory, as you mentioned, it has a variable speed. You can adjust the throttle and so on. But for the simplicity of the thesis, we assume that it's uh, inside with a constant speed. However, yes, that's a, that's a good, good point. Okay. And then you, you mentioned at the end, again, this dynamic constraints. Mm -hmm. Now, which you were not able to build in mm -hmm. um, at this point, but um, did you actually have at least a look at, at it? If yes. you have uh, some, uh, some extremely high accelerations or jerks? Um, yes, so for the acceleration case, uh, I have formulated uh, maximum acceleration method, which wasn't presented as it, um, as it had, um, I would explain the uh, monoticity was broken and uh, there were undesirable artifacts. However, um, so multi-order, as you can, as you know, uh, can boost its acceleration to its limit in any orthogonal direction. So using that, having the constraints already, we can formulate the maximum acceleration curve, which means it's going to go full blast and then full stop on the path. For that, I formulated orthogonal and the parallel uh, speed um, formulation. However, um, this basically uh, created some undesirable artifacts in the sense that first, the track area boundary is very small and thus the vehicle can converge the path really quickly compared to the other methods. However, uh, once we get into um, high path velocity and in those cases, um, because of the high acceleration, the total norm of the velocity gets distorted, and thus, the monoticity-wise, it wasn't ideal to use this, um, and thus it was excluded from the validation. Okay, and in the, the fixed wing case, <coughs> um, you have no issue with, with um, high acceleration for the fixed wing case. Uh, so. This was first for multi order and actually it was on the global frame, so the body frame wasn't accounted for, yeah. which is important for fixing case. So that case hasn't been evaluated whether we can adapt it to the, the yaw coupled acceleration constraints. Okay, thanks. Other question? Everything clear. From the Zoom, there's some questions. So I think I 
what do you think about like this kind of after you've done this project? Do you think it's still like a good approach to approach this kind of guidance of a unified approach, or do you, would you after you've done this project prefer more of like a more optimized uh, approach for you to take your time more? Um, what would be your opinion after you have finished this project? Um, I think that um, so. I, it was worth challenging, so I thought it was going to be simply unifiable, but it was not the case. So I think that currently, as it's done, like the coupled approach is totally fine. Uh, however, the final point on the acceleration jerk limit, I think this part is something that can be expanded further. So having this uh, body coupled acceleration jerk limit, defining the velocity curve which is something I couldn't do with the duration of the project, has the potential to be more generic and unified and yeah, can be more realistic with the hyper Good. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe I have one question, yeah. if I may ask. Um, regarding hybrid vehicles, um, usually they have a transition phase where they switch from helicopter uh, to frequent flight, um, how do you think that will work during that phase of the transition, like do you need special handling or do you think it will just work as is? Um, so what I think uh, is possible is we will, so for current definition, the path velocity and the approach velocity um, by definition wouldn't change during the transition. So. For that case, I think um, our normal, like the velocity we can achieve with the VTOL will change as we transition to a higher um, flying speed. So ramping that up um, while in transition, but I, I haven't tried this, but um, that's, that's what I think could work. However, yep, I haven't uh, really simulated or really formulated that part. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Last question. Okay. So, if not, thanks very much. Yeah.